So, uh, uh, the presentation is done by me and my colleague uh, Juan Torrejon and Georgia Nulis. I'm representing the, I'm working for the U University of Pompeu Fabra in Barcelona and I was also in the foundation of the Hellenic world in Athens. And uh, we are going to present uh, actually the results of a work that we have done, which is a part of a European project uh, called uh, Virtual Multimodal Museums, focusing on the digital applications in cultural heritage uh, from many points of view, technology, effectiveness, cost, uh, uh, scientific accuracy, uh, preservation impact, educational impact. Uh, so the RIM project uh, has been set up uh, in order to analyze and promote the role of uh, virtual multimodal museums. And when we are talking about virtual multimodal museums, we are talking about a new way of seeing the museum. We have produced a new definition of what the museum is that is proposed to ICOMOS, and it will be probably adopted in Crete uh, in the next uh, ICOMOS meeting. Uh, the idea is a museum that is changing, is all over, uh, is not very focused only in the objects or in the site, but is all over around us, uh, is in our mobiles, in our, uh, on the web, uh, on the applications, uh, on our apartments itself, uh, when we are looking on, the, uh, on our computer. So uh, our main uh, goals were to intensify discussion about uh, how, uh, among cultural heritage stakeholders and work uh, towards necessary levels of consensus of, on key technical, legal and policy areas to define and develop and promote a unique sustainable platform engaging a large number of stakeholders. I will talk to you about that to gain high visibility through social media to establish uh, the exact nature of the key economic drivers for cultural heritage and especially for multimodal museums and their added value for the society and uh, to support the inclusion of uh, digital technologies in the museums in the cultural heritage. Uh, one, uh, we have uh, in our board uh, the, all the important institutions that are uh, uh, from private and uh, public sector, among which ICOMOS, uh, SIPA, Europeana, uh, uh, Europa Nostra, Interpol for uh, things of preservation. And talking about uh, preservation, just to make a small parenthesis, uh, digital heritage is not only access, is not only study, but is also preservation. Uh, given the destruction of the museum in Brazil, uh, uh, how many of these 20 million items that have been destroyed have been properly digitized in 3D models with all the accurate metadata? How many knowledge could be saved uh, if this uh, digital repository uh, would have been available uh, for the generation of the future, even to reconstruct some of them? If the, It's the ultimate preservator in case of major disasters that hopefully uh, we, we are trying to avoid, but always happens uh, by wars, by accidents. So uh, here you can see the VIM platform. Um, it will open right now. We have created a platform. We, we are already are registered about... Uh, I guess it's so. Uh, <laughs> See, uh, no safe. It doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, you can open it in your uh, mobile. Ah, yeah, here it is. It comes. Um, uh, in this platform, there are already registered about uh, 1,000 experts, policymakers, and um, uh, archaeologists, curators worldwide. And it, uh, you can make your own posts. Uh, it's a kind of uh, a mixture of LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, and Twitter in uh, a platform dedicated to cultural heritage. You can meet your fellow experts, your fellow archaeologists. You can post yourself. So please note the address. You can uh, win your time here or use your time here, free time to just to register. You can promote your work and your project, and you can find opportunities uh, for uh, just like uh, 
uh, new calls for funding, publications, you can post your publications, uh, technologies uh, that are used, and uh, events. Uh, it's open to the public, it is, and it is interactive, uh, and you can have, uh, find also collaborators for your project. I will come back uh, to the platform, uh, but uh, uh, please take your time and uh, uh, register and present yourself there. Uh, automatically, also your posts are redistributed in Facebook and in Twitter pages of Vim. So, uh, the part we are talking about, one of the results of the project is linked to what has been told in the introduction, is the decision-making process. We, among the other things we did, was to, in, uh, to analyze uh, the decision-making process in uh, the creation of a digital application in the virtual museum. Uh, uh, what is that? Actually, in each one of the stages where an application or a, a project has been developed, there's somebody who, who makes the decisions. Who, who is this person? Is the decision maker, is the person who allocates resources and he has the expertise and at the end signs uh, that he will allocate resources for this project. Time, money, uh, person, staff uh, in each one of the organizations. So uh, we brought together about 100 <coughs> experts. We discussed this uh, issue in uh, all uh, possible uh, ways. And we finally uh, uh, concluded in a four stages uh, decision-making process, which is uh, the idea generation is the first stage, the concept, how you decide that, uh, how, how emerge uh, an idea for uh, the, in in the creation of a digital application, the design and the planning, which, are very, which is a very important step, most of the applications have made serious problems I will talk about a bit later about uh, in the phase of design. The implementation, when this is created, digitization, inclusion, development of the software. And at the end, the operation, which is also uh, not uh, enough estimated uh, in the beginning, and at the end, uh, the way we evaluate the impact, the scientific in the public impact. So. The team of experts uh, we uh, had, uh, you can see it also on the platform, and uh, uh, it's uh, here in the four uh, in the f uh, different thematic areas that they worked in this uh, aspect. These were the experts who worked in the decision-making process. It's everything is available in the platform as well as this presentation will be, so it's not necessary to note everything if you register. So um, I'm going through the four stages uh, model very quickly. Uh, the, uh, uh, and we're in the results that we have identified in each stage. Uh, concerning the idea generation, uh, we identified the stakeholders, who in each organization is involved, uh, who, ha who is allowed, uh, to have an opinion, to generate an idea, what incentives he has or she has in order to do that, economic time, money, what ways where he can submit his idea. Let's go digitize this stuff and present it that way. Uh, there are many people who can do it inside the organizations and the society around the organizations. Uh, how he can reach the decision maker and say, okay, look, I have this great idea. Uh, uh, who is going to do that? What the process is? Why he is going to do that? What is going to gain from that? Is he going to have an award, a prize or something? So we propose some solutions in this stage. And uh, uh, the second uh, uh, thing in this stage that we have identified the second problem is uh, uh, that uh, uh, there is not enough uh, resources uh, uh, in the first, the second, and the fourth stage uh, for the work. All the resources are going to the implementation uh, uh, when it has been decided. And the, uh, the third thing is that uh, we have identified the adequate level of maturity to be achieved and the resources required in each stage in order to pass in the next one. 
So what are the conclusions for the uh, stage one? There is a lack of standardization process for the idea and concept generation in almost all organizations, all cases that we have studied. We have studied uh, more than 50 cases of digital applications. There is lack of resources in time, know-how and incentives for the idea generation. The stage two, the design and study of the digital cultural project is underestimated in most of the cases. We focus mainly in the design of the development and the implementation. There is insufficient provision when we pass in the design, when we say we're going to do this application, huh, for money, for resources to make a, a sustainable and effective business plan. How is this is going to operate? And this is a problem that will going to appear later. I was talking before with my colleagues saying, for example, the majority of the visitors, you have 30% of the visitors in the museum that is coming for one hour because the bus is waiting uh, for them and they have one hour visit. Is that taken into account when you develop a digital application? Huh? Uh, the archaeologists, of course, they want to give more information but they have to be aware on the same time on the operational way of the, of the thing. So you have to have various solutions, and this is my work, my personal work and my colleagues, to provide creative solutions actually in this kind of issues and conciliate different objectives, uh, provide them with an access to the additional information after uh, the visit or before the visit on enhancement, enhance the storytelling uh, through a storytelling process or through mobile devices. The organization lacks know-how, expertise, and does not dedicate sufficient resources in the design within the overall project. Uh, concerning the stage three, uh, we uh, concluded that the implementation uh, is considered mostly in the organization the project, which is not the case. If it is well designed, it is not the project. It's the application of the design uh, that of the decision that have been taken in the previous step and that are rather well detailed. So we have major problems there many times because here they are trying to, solve, to, to resolve the problems that have, that have not been thought in the previous stages. And uh, however, there are also important elements of expertise missing uh, from the organizations to monitor the process. The, pe the people inside the stakeholders and when we are talking about stakeholders, our curators, our uh, municipalities, our local authorities, etc., they don't know, uh, they don't have the expertise to do that. And finally, the stage four, there is insuffic insufficient medium and long-term evaluation and impact studies. And this is what the Commission asked us to do. I have presented yet, that yesterday in another session um, concerning the impact in the society uh, and the economy uh, of the digital application and the cultural heritage um, in order to justify to the people why we are spending money on that, public money on that, and uh, how we adapt our solutions and how we make them sustainable. Um, so VIM uh, propositions and tools uh, uh, is to identify clearly the decision maker in, in each stage, to allocate resources and uh, to create, uh, and this is what we're going to present, a decision-making tool, which is exactly a structure of what decision has to be taken, a decision has to be taken in each one of the stages, and it will be available in our platform, uh, and uh, provide expertise and information for each one of these decisions. So the idea is that the tool will provide the possibility to the registered members of the platform to link their costs to precise uh, points of the decision-making process in order for the other members to be able to see their costs. Uh, for example, let's say stage two, somebody is designing technology and uh, he needs to uh, look for technology uh, and uh, uh, find experts who are linked to that. If you link your profile to, the, to this stage, the people will, will be able to see the relative costs and the profile of the experts and talk with them and bring expertise to their, uh, to their project and vice versa. Uh, practically, this is what uh, is the overall scheme. There is a theoretical background, uh, which is not only that. I tried to explain that very quickly. 
And this is what is going to be implemented. Uh, it's the last part of the platform that has not yet been implemented completely. Okay. So we have the four stages of the decision making process. Uh, on the center is the decision maker. And then an example, the idea generation, the external actors, the internal actors of the organization. You have the society, policy makers, chambers of commerce, tourism, etc., which is external. You have external experts, you have external designers, you have inside the personnel, uh, you have the curators, you have the technologists inside the institution, the archaeologists, the scientists, and all those have been to be brought together uh, in a way uh, that they can understand in order to produce uh, uh, effective uh, and uh, efficient decisions. And uh, my colleague will explain you how this will work. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I will be very brief because I think we don't have much time, right? Yeah, we have. Uh, um, Just one minute. Yeah, it's basically, very... this is like a guideline where you can go through and you will be able to pick among each part of the process different experts and uh, ideas that will help you uh, to guide yourself among the, 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 the whole process. So, yeah, basically, that's not implemented yet, as you said, but you will be able to, for example, see in the business plan, well, th there is this kind of people and institutions that are um, working and, and have experience in this field, so they will probably tell you the, the experiences they already had or, or what they would do, so it will help you in, in, the, in the parts that you may have not that much uh, knowledge about. And yeah, if you go through... The is things, the implementation of operation and evaluation yeah. is the same thing, uh, where you can also offer your projects and your expertise to other experts. Exactly. So the idea is to have more uh, efficiency in the process and also to bring people together so everyone can talk to each other in a more uh, democratic and neutral way. So everyone has a voice and everyone has something to say, basically. Yes. So please uh, take your time to register to the platform and post your projects and uh, meet with everybody around in, in our community. Thanks a lot.